Hello everybody, and welcome to Judge Mathis, and today on trial stands Far Sky. Far Sky for me kind of came out of left field, all honestly. I got an email from the developers saying they wanted me to check out their game, so I said sure, I'll take a look and play it, and I wasn't quite sure what to expect. I did a little bit of reading, uh, a little bit of YouTube watching, just to see and get a general idea of how the game worked before playing it. And what I got was j uh, a very heavily Minecraft-inspired game. Obviously, maybe not quite as uh, heavily Minecraft-inspired as other games are, um, as it's not voxel-based and you can't really destroy the terrain. But nonetheless, it is a survival sandbox with building elements, which this day and age people are going to equate to Minecraft. But Far Sky does enough to its benefit that uh, it differentiates uh, itself from the pack pretty well. More obviously, it is all underwater. The story is that your submarine breaks and you are stranded underwater and it is your duty to survive. There are multiple styles of play, including sandbox, or including rather, adventure mode and survivor mode, of which there is a story where you're off gathering the different pieces of your submarine to put it back together so you can get back to the surface. Survivor mode, same thing, but harder, more more predators in the water. And then sandbox mode, which is where I feel like a lot of people are going to end up spending their time, like games like these. Now, sandbox mode is interesting, because not only does it do what a lot of other sandbox games do, in that it randomly generates a world, it you can kind of tweak how you have difficulty you want it, the daytime, the nighttime length, but it also allows you to pick starting equipment. And those starting equipment you can buy with gold. But you can only get gold by playing the adventure mode. So if you want to play a sort of sandbox mode that is, you know, toted with all the best stuff in the world, you need to play adventure mode for quite a while before you can do that. Or if you want to play a more vanilla survival quote unquote mode in sandbox, you're not going to want to spend any gold. This is interesting. I'm not entirely sure if I like it or not. I can see the benefits of both doing it and not doing it. Um, for one, if you're one of those guys that just wants to play in, in kind of mod in everything or, you know, um, just giving yourself all the best things just by opening up the console, uh, you know, this mode of, of locking all of that stuff away is kind of interesting. Maybe, like, give us a creator's mode instead. Uh, but locking away a lot of the stuff also allows for people like myself uh, to just go in and play hardcore, like, survival-style game. So, with that said, the question is, how does Far Sky hold up? Well, let's play a little bit, and I'll talk about what I like, what I don't like, so on and so forth. So let's play up a, a brand new world. It's going to generate a brand new world. And like I said, all aspects of the game are randomly generated as far as world's creation is concerned. So here we are. Is there a way I can pause this? Here we are in, um, yeah, I can do this. Okay. Uh, in our first randomly generated world, we're in the shallow parts of the water to start. Um, and I do mean to start because later on, a lot of the better stuff or the harder stuff is going to be in the deeper areas of the water. Um, but in the shallow parts of the water, um, we can gain some or gather some basic minerals. So these areas of the floor that have these like weird rune-like magic things on them is actually iron. Um, and this is going to bring up one of the first complaints I have about the game. The texture quality. Holy crap, this game is not pretty. Um, I, I'll straight up put it out there. This game is not pretty whatsoever. There's some, should I say, up close it's not pretty. There's some actually pretty cool looking stuff later on. Um, but technically speaking, the game is just kind of basic looking, which is not going to hold you back too much as long as the game is fun, uh, which is important. Um, also, minerals never, as far as I can ever tell, run out. Uh, for the longest I've played, for as long as I've been playing, I have literally just sat here and I've drilled iron for a very, very long time. And I've never run out of minerals before. And that's going to be another thing that kind of I instant, instantly kind of don't like. And the reason I don't like I don't like that very much is because it takes away from the difficulty of the game. A lot of these games and its difficulty is is about resource management. And why would I ever go out looking for iron if I have iron right here, right now and I can infinitely mine this? I don't like that at all. I think that greatly de uh, depreciates the difficulty and the adventure that games like this have. A lot of the excitement in these types of games is the ability to go out and look for the miner minerals you need. And if I am able to get the minerals I need right here, right now, why would I bother doing anything else? And the thing is, like, this is all huge amounts of minerals that we could get right now. And this is actually really important too. We have ourselves gold. Gold looks like it's actually finite. That's actually good. I'm glad to see that. I'd like to see all minerals like that. Hey, maybe iron is infinite and I'm just an idiot and don't see it disappearing. The thing with it is that it's so abundant no matter what that it never feels like it's infinite. Alright, so 
Uh, quick look over look of our HUD. The top left is our health. It also shows our depth on the left hand side. And the bottom um, is going to be our, you can see it blinking, our our oxygen meter. So in the beginning of every game, it gives you a base you can actually put down. So we're going to go ahead and plop down a base just right there. And he erupts out of the ground like crazy. And we can bounce over here. We only have 45 seconds of air left. So you get a basic house right away, which is kind of cool. Stingrays. By the way, this game is not for people who are terrified of sea creatures. I have jumped in this game numerous times. If there's one thing this game does really well, it's present the ambiance and the atmosphere of an underwater world quite well. The minimalistic echoey music, the sounds of things swimming around you, and then, you know, maybe killing a fish which also creates blood of which then attracts sharks, scares the ever-living shit out of me. Um, and it does a very good job at doing that. So. Uh, this is our base, and much like any building game, you're going to have to get your basics set up. So we have ourselves our main workshop. From here, we can make all of our basic other ones. So we already have a main workshop. We don't need one of those. But an equipment workshop, we need to put down. Um, we also need a weapon workshop if we want to kill things for food. Furniture and building workshops are thereafter. So let's go ahead and put down this, and go ahead and put down that. Nice and easy, right? We have a weapon workshop. Let's actually make a dagger. So we can, or a knife rather, it's called. There's also spear guns, but they don't... Uh, I use just kind of a knife early on. There's no need to spend my materials on making a, a spear right away, but you can make it. It does three damage. And then we have our equipment workshop, which allows us to make better diving suits. So we have iron diving suit, copper diving suit, and finally magni mag mag magnanese diving suit. Better drills as well, which we're gonna, we already have one, obviously, very Bioshock inspired there. Um, but the drills will mine faster. We have underwater scooter if you want to go fast bandage to heal up and these allow you to go deeper and deeper without taking damage so basically if you go into the deepest darkest depths the pressure starts cracking your uh the pressure starts to crack your visor and, and you start kind of uh losing it um so like i said one of the great things this game does and i will absolutely give it to it is the uh is the underwater sea creature or the sea life it's not so varied that it's like blows your mind or anything i mean you have your basic fish you're gonna see a lot of stingrays you also see a couple different sharks um, you're gonna see great whites and hammerheads, uh, but one of the things is being able to hear the echoing distance of a whale and then all of a sudden see him start to come into view and how big he is. It can catch you off guard if you don't, if you're not ready for it. And the idea that the water is pretty damn murky, you can't see that far, also adds to that kind of terrifying fear of being attacked by a shark underwater. Let's see if we can get a shark to show up. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna attack is that and let's get the hell out of here and see if a shark shows up. Woo! I don't know if there one will. Oh shit. Oh shit. Okay. Woo! Okay, let's get out of here. Oh my god. I'm actually scared out of my mind by doing that. But we got some food. We do need to feed ourselves and that's one way of doing it. Um, is killing fish. You can also grow plants in the game. Um, which we can create, obviously, through materials. I do not see a shark. So no shark came. No shark showed up due to the blood being drawn. So let's go ahead and go mine some iron. Because we need more iron. A lot of fish. Oh, you're actually... Are those dolphins? Yep. Yeah. Uh, nope. But I hear... I do hear a whale somewhere. But we're going to sit here and mine away at our iron. So, what are the... What, what, what does this game bring to the table, obviously, other than its underwater world, that something like Minecraft doesn't? Well... It does the whole idea of being able to, it, it brings that RPG exploration aspect, if I can get the words out of my mouth, that Minecraft not necessarily doesn't really have. Minecraft, you can kind of go anywhere, anytime, the world's not really going to get more and more difficult. Far Sky, on the other hand, does get more difficult as you go further because the world gets more hostile. Um, it does have a day-night cycle as well, much like Minecraft, and at night the predators are more active and they're more uh, likely to kill you and um, eat you for breakfast and or lunch or dinner, depending on how they feel. Again, more stingrays just floating around, not really doing their thing. So let's go ahead and grab a 40. My, my only concern and one of my biggest worries about Far Sky is that it might not go far enough in one direction or the other. And by that I mean, the single player campaign is basically sandbox mode, the same exact thing, with the exception of the, uh, with the exception of a goal of putting your submarine together to get the end. Right? Ooh, dolphins, there they are. Cool. They don't look amazing by any stretch, but they look good enough. Um, I do hear, I do hear a whale. Let's see if we can see the whale. Gotta listen. I don't, maybe he's gone. He could have been just out there and doing his thing and then, and then, uh, moved away. Um, <clears throat> but, 
Yeah, anyway, let's continue. I apologize, I got a little sidetracked underwater. Happens to the best of us. So let's keep building some stuff. Whoa. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, what, what was I even saying? Something about my concern with the game not being able to do... Oh, so, yeah, the game doesn't go further enough in either direction. And by that, I mean, it's not really an RPG or an adventure game in that it's it's wide open kind of survival sandbox, but it's crafting aspect doesn't seem to go far enough or deep enough. Um, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that right now. Uh, let's go ahead and build these buildings. Now, as far as I can tell, these are all the workshops that you'll ever have. Um, so let's plop these down. Boom, boom. And this is this is important because of this is uh, w of what it brings. You can build a new base, uh, extractors, which is actually kind of important. We're actually going to build an extractor here in a minute. Harpoon cannon, which is kind of cool. Like it has some cool things here, but it doesn't have a lot, which is uh, you know a little bit unfortunate. And the reason it's unfortunate is because a game like Minecraft, especially Minecraft with mods, is that there's so much stuff to do. Never mind Minecraft. As in, uh, in, in the sense that you have, um, say, like, uh, the Tekkit pack or everything added to it, where there's just an infinite, infinite amount of progression and stuff. But half the fun of these games is surviving and creating better and better and better things so you can actually make life easier in the world that you're playing in. And it doesn't seem that Far Sky has that type of progression. In fact, it seems like that progression kind of grounds to a halt very, very quickly um, as you play. Which is not something you want in this game. You want to be able to start, you know, with nothing and then over the hours as you work and play more, kind of work up to more and more stuff. But I'm still finding myself a few hours in having fun with the game, despite all of that. You know, when I first saw the game, I was like, oh god, great, another Minecraft clone, this will be real fun. And, you know, I'm not, you're not wrong in thinking that because it very much is, in some ways, a Minecraft clone. Um, but it still has some cool ideas. It, it brings in this underwater world for one, which I think is good enough to differentiate itself um, from other things like it. And the uh, the fear factor, especially if you're fear of, uh, afraid of being underwater, um, of being snuck up on by sea creatures is definitely there, which I do like as well. But I feel like the game could do better if it had more progression. I want to see other things. I feel like I mean, unless I'm missing something, and I've been, I've played for about an hour or two now. It just, I, it looks like that's it. Like, and the reason I say it looks like that's it is because if we go up here and take a look, all right, come on, yeah, I gotta hit that ladder, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, there are no more things to build. So we've got, you know, our extractor, our harpoon cannon, a new base. We could build walls and stuff, which we'll build a bunch. I'm gonna show you how that works. Um, so let's put that down. But as far as like other workshops are concerned, that's all of them. This is all the workshops. I want more than that, man. I want more than that. I want these to be like the basics because look how quickly I got all the workshops up within minutes. I haven't even been playing for 15 minutes yet and I have all the workshops already done. Um, we're actually getting hungry here. We're starting to starve. I apologize. I'd be focusing on getting food if I was paying more attention. You can grow stuff too and whatnot, but we're actually going to probably end up starving to death because I was, I've was i been too busy talking. Um, but I would really, really love to see a higher sense of progression in this game. Because they have some cool ideas. So we have this uh, extractor, for instance. We can go ahead and plop down this extractor. Boom. It shoots up, and now it automatically mines for me. I am literally 14 minutes into this game, and I already have something that's automatically mining for me. And it's getting dark out. Let's go ahead and hide. It's already automatically mining stuff for me. It's a bit quick. Um, and I, I would, you know, that's the kind of thing you'd maybe want to see, like, later in the game. And something that you can all get an extractor later. Think how long it takes to get extractors and stuff like that in other games that do it automatically for you. It takes a while. Um, so in order to build, by the way, uh, add onto your base, all you do is add floors. The building is not complicated at all, which uh, some people may like, some people may hate. But if I just want to build something, I just kind of attach, like look till I attach and then I can click and I can extend everything outward a bit. And then if I go in here, hey, look at that, automatically have this back wall now that that wasn't there before. So that's kind of how the building works. Very, very simplistic. One of the easiest things to do is build a new base and then attach the bases via hallways, add doors and stuff. But because there's so very little in the way of progression, um, the need for space is incredibly minimal. You're not going to be collecting so much stuff that you're going to be uh, um, that you're going to be needing all that space. Which I, again, I feel like what's here is a good foundation. I'd love to see more though. 
this is one of those games that I find myself actually wandering around and experiencing the world and the underwater world more than I'm actually playing the game, which is kind of not something you want to say. But what I do see here is incredibly promising, and it's a shame that it actually just fully released on Steam and maybe isn't taking some more time to be developed. I feel like, I feel like it needs a little bit more time in the oven. I feel like there's just not enough here to, to say, yeah, you should definitely go buy this. I'd say maybe wait a little bit, and if this is a type of genre you enjoy, which I, you know, I do enjoy... Um, keep your eye on it, because if they continue adding, if they continue supporting, and if it sells well enough, you will, we might get that aspect of the game that you want. Um, the, the aspect of, of crafting and stuff, or more things to craft and stuff. Now, I will say there are treasure chests you can find out in the world that do hold random things, um, but I, I don't want to go, tre like with this game, treasure hunting should just be a side thing. The main thing should be building and allowing yourself to explode outward with more and more tech, as you do more and more things and as you mine more and more um, but with infinite resources with uh, the ability to, to just see what you're going to build uh, the, the the with the ability to see as as far into the future as the max items you're going to build right away and looking around and saying these are only the only workshops i need while you're playing the game i'm not entirely sold that this is going to be uh that this is ready for public consumption yet um and, and it's funny because i'm not the only one that thinks that either i was actually looking around at some of the reviews, the user reviews as well. I'm gonna take all that um, that people have in this game, and most people, or a lot of people, are saying the same thing. They like the idea. They just want more, more things to do and more things to play with. And if people are saying they like your game enough to say they want more, that's a good start. And I hope that you guys actually do more with it because this has a lot of potential. But for right now, it's a little too basic. It's just a little bit too basic and could use a little bit more, uh, a little bit more, not necessarily polish, but just more content. Put more content. And maybe, I don't know if it's possible, but maybe open it up to modders. I think modders could have wonders with this, types of, with this type of game. The amount of things they could introduce into this game. Maybe like a Kraken or something or some crazy pirate ship. There's a lot that could be done with this setting alone. And to be honest, I'm surprised that not a lot of people have done anything with this setting before. There's a lot that could be done here. And I think, uh, I really think you guys have something here that could be really cool. Um, so I hope you guys... Are able the developers are able to do something with it but as far as you the consumer is concerned um, right now you can get it for 15 bucks I believe it might be ten dollars on its opening week sale it's def if you're interested in the idea of this uh, keep your eye on it it's definitely something I'm having fun with and I definitely say I've had fun in the past couple of hours but I'm not quite sure it's ready for uh, there's enough content rather to keep you here for a long time and with these types of games you want to be here for a long time that's going to be my judgment here on this particular game of Far Sky. Thank you guys so much. Let me know what you guys, the jury, think below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you come back every day for more videos just like this. And if you are so feeling so generous, consider dropping that like. It helps me out a great deal. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.